where my equipment is housed and from where I do all my astrophotography uh, using the equipment remotely from wherever I am in the world. I wanted to talk just a little bit about um, what it takes to create one of the photographs that you'll see on my website, how, how to do some astrophotography. The first thing to note is that there's a big difference between doing just regular photography using a digital SLR camera and doing um, astrophotography. If you wanted to take a photograph of me or the scene here now, then the exposure time would probably be a fraction of a second to get a great photograph. And the reason is, of course, that there's uh, lots of light. Now, when you're taking images of an object which is perhaps millions of light years away, the amount of light reaching the Earth and the amount of light reaching the camera chip is extremely small. So instead of a fraction of a second, I'm taking images which are many hours, maybe 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 hours of imaging. Now, uh, as an example, you'll see on my website um, a galaxy called M33. Now for this image, I used about 12 hours of exposure in total. And of course, you'll see it's a colour image. So to get a, a, an astrophotographer, um, astrophotography image of colour, you need to image through a red filter and a green filter and a blue filter. And you also need um, through what's called a luminance filter, which is essentially no filter. It gives more of the detail. Now, so for um, 12 hours of total image, you'd probably need about three hours through the red filter and the green filter and the blue filter and so on. So if you want three um, hours of red, um, you can't just take one image of three hours. Now there's a number of reasons why not. Um, one is you get lots of different artifacts and electronic noise. And secondly, with five minutes to go, the clouds would come over or there would be an aeroplane or a satellite which would ruin it. So what you actually do is you take shorter exposures which are called subframes. And typically I take subframes of 5, 10, 15 minutes, maybe up to 30 minutes. With the M33 I took seven, uh, sorry, 10 minute subframes, so I took 18 subframes to make um, the time required for the red. However, um, these sometimes still fail because of um, aeroplanes or more likely satellites, so you need to take more than just the 18 required for those three hours. So I probably build in about 25% redundancy. So I needed about 22, 23 uh, images of 10 minutes just to get the red. So you repeat all that for the uh, green and the blue and the luminance, and then you throw away the ones that uh, failed and you end up with the ones that are good and making up about 12 hours in this case. Now, at that point, these are pretty much useless. And the reason that they're useless is because they will have on them lots of artifacts, uh, usually electronic, uh, maybe um, errors on the chip or just electronic noise from doing such long exposures. So to get them to what I would call clean um, subframes, you need to do a lot more work uh, using what are called calibration frames. So you're taking a lot more images to remove the artifacts. So one, for example, are called dark frames. And here you're taking a similar number of images to that you took of the red, green or blue or green, uh, but with the shutter closed. And this um, highlights some of the artifacts that are on, on the chip. And then you use software to subtract all those calibration frames from your main subframes. And then you end up with what I would call clean subframes. And you do that for all the different uh, images that you have in each filter. Now at this stage, um, you want to then bring them together. So you take all the red subframes and you use software to combine them all and you do it with the same with the others. So you end up with a red file, with the red information, the green information, the blue information and the luminance. 
And at this point you can begin to combine them. So you start with combining the red, green and blue together. And at that point, for the first time, you will see something in colour. You won't be surprised to know that it will look horrible. And the reason it will look horrible is because you need to use a lot more software to extract the detail. And this is the real time consuming and the skill of creating a good um, astro photograph. So having um, got the red, green and blue looking like a great image finally, you combine the luminance which will give it a lot more detail and then do some more processing. And then hopefully you end up with what looks like a great image. There's one other complication is that I actually do some astrophotography using some other types of filters which are called narrowband filters and these look at certain and very specific wavelengths of light and then I combine those to create other types of astrophotographs and you'll see some images on my site which are have a lot of gold, yellow and blue in and these are using those narrowband filters. So I encourage you to go and have a look at the images on the site and I hope this has given you some insight into what's required to make uh, an astro photograph. Thank you. Thank you.